Dave told me I had to jump through the window, do some hazard stuff. <laughs> going through the door was probably a little more efficient. Uh, thank you all for coming out and supporting Wendy. Uh, this was an absolutely can't miss event for me. Uh, I am a huge, both personal, professional, political supporter um, of Wendy and frankly her entire family because uh, as, as Zach and, uh, and Gary know, this is not a Wendy operation, it's a family operation. Everybody invests in this. Folks, the reason I support Wendy as strongly as I do and why I personally believe in her is I think the Republican Party has gone astray. You know, we haven't lost elections on our message. We've lost elections on them stealing our message because the message has gotten somehow foggy. When you offer the other side the choice between Democrat and Democrat light, they're always going to take the Democrat. We have to start electing people who are bedrocked in principles not political garbage. I hate politics, but I love fighting against the other side. Wendy is one of those people. The minute I met her, we met at Blaine's event. She just, from the start, she just radiates positive energy. And the bottom line is, if you elect her, she's not going to complain about yesterday. She's going to tell you how tomorrow is going to be better. And that's the kind of people we need. So it is my honor, and I do mean personal honor and privilege, to introduce to you your next delegate, Wendy Peters. Thank you very much, Dan and Senator Brinkley. Thank you very much. Um, again, I'm proud that my senator is Senator Brinkley, and I certainly look forward to District 6 being represented by Dan Bongino. Mm -hmm. Thank you all very much for being here tonight. It's certainly an honor to be able to look out and see all those friendly, smiling faces. I'd like to take a moment and just introduce my family for those of you who might not know them. Uh, my husband, of course, Gary Peters, if you could give a little wave. Um, <laughs> the trooper in all of this and um, we're glad that, that he agrees this is the right thing to do. My parents are in the back. Um, they could wave Billy and Barbara Wagner. <laughs> I have two brothers. One of them is in law enforcement um, and it was important that he continue in the assignment that he has tonight so he couldn't be here. His lovely wife, um, Albie, and her two kids, Anthony and Taylor are here tonight. I've got some really good campaigners in my family, and Taylor and Anthony are two of the top ones. So they work hard, and, and they know the message. So look forward to seeing them on the campaign trail. My other brother, Nick, and his wife, Connie, are here tonight um, with their daughter, Samantha. Um, Will and his fiance. We have a wedding coming up in November. We're very excited about. So please welcome yeah. them as well. So many of you uh, know my family, and you've heard me talk about growing up here in Mount Airy and the discussions that we've had at the dinner table. And while they seem so simple at the time, they were powerful discussions. They left lasting impressions about sacrifice, hard work faith, and duty to family and country. Many of you know the family business up on North Main Street, the butcher shop, home of Wagner's Pride Meats. Often, our conversations took place when we were eating the weekly special that my dad thought would sell better than it actually did. We discussed the market price of livestock, donations to local service clubs, or how mom and dad would balance the demands of the business with the crazy schedules of three kids. But like all of you out there who have a business, we also talked about the sacrifices that we would have to make as a family to keep the business running. My dad was also a volunteer, uh, volunteer fireman and an ambulance captain. And I remember with pride the loud thuds in the middle of the night as the siren rang, he jumped into his running gear and ran off into the night. There were softball games with the fire company, Sunday dinners, carnival fundraisers, hours of training, not to mention the personal sacrifices of always being on the ready in a time of tra tragedy. The other topic that we talked about was sports. 
We are competitors. My brothers and I were year-round athletes. We talked about our victories, talked about our defeats, and we talked about the importance of hard work and commitment to team. While those family dinner conversations may be but a distant memory, the lessons and the values about sacrifice, hard work, faith, duty to family and country remain with me today as an indelible mark never to be removed. I've carried that mark with me as a mom, community volunteer, and throughout my time in public service. I'm very honored to have had an opportunity to serve my hometown. I'm proud of the work that we've done revitalizing our downtown, upgrading our infrastructure, working with the business community, and most important, being a good steward of taxpayer dollars. Many of you know I've spent the last year fighting cancer. But more important, what you really need to know, I won. I honestly have to tell you, there are few things in life that can bring focus and clarity than the news of that diagnosis and the battle that, that follows. I know it, I lived it, and may God be with everyone who has ever been touched by the dark and dreadful disease. I've also spent the last year watching with profound sadness as our constitutional rights are being eroded and our pockets are being raided. I've watched with sadness as leaders talk of fiscal responsibility but act with fiscal neglect. I've watched with sadness as leaders talk about the value of education, but fail to support access of quality education for every child. <clears throat> I've watched with sadness as our leaders work to gain our trust at election time, only to disappoint us with their votes and their service. That, I believe, each of us has an obligation to do our part to hold these leaders accountable and work to preserve the things that we value most, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is why I feel compelled that I need to take action. Not everyone has to be a candidate, but we do need everyone in this battle. There are many ways that you can fulfill your obligation and join the fight. There's so much power in grassroots, neighbor talking to neighbor, giving your time to a candidate, writing a check to a candidate, and if you need some help, I have a few really good suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, I ask you to dig deep, dig deep within, and determine how best it is that you can join the fight, and let's get busy. I've done just that, and I'm proud to tell you tonight that I am announcing I am a candidate for Maryland House of Delegates, District 4. And what you need to know is that as your delegate, I will support and defend the Maryland Constitution and the U.S. Constitution. tax relief for all taxpayers and job creators. Maryland should be a place where families can afford to live and businesses can thrive. I will work to ensure that all students have access to quality education. I will work to preserve and protect our farms and our farming and agribusiness community. I will work to reduce the size of government and eliminate overreaching, very burdensome, regulations. I will tackle these challenges with the same energy and commitment that I have exhibited in my years of public service. With your help, we can restore opportunity and economic vitality right here in Maryland. Together, we will make Maryland better. Thank you all so very much for coming out.
big up as you are. Feel free to stick around. We have, like I said, Cash Bar. I hope everyone knows that. <laughs> cash Bar over here. Uh, make sure you support these lovely VFW ladies. They've been working so hard for us tonight. Um, and donations are accepted. Uh, so you can see either me or my grandfather to uh, cut a check. Um, appreciate you guys coming out. We really do. Uh, hopefully you're as excited as we are. Thank you.